This is how they want to restore family and protect kids by saying things don't exist. They're going to say that sexual orientation and gender identity, both of those terms will no longer be applicable on government paperwork, according to Project 2025. Diversity, you can't use that term anymore. Quality, gone. Inclusion, not a term to be used anymore. Gender, gender equality, gone. You can't talk about gender or gender equality, you can't use those terms. Gender awareness, nope, can't use it. Gender sensitivity, nope, can't use it. Abortion, there's gonna be no need for that term as well, because it's not allowed. Why would you need to discuss it nationally? Project 2025. How can our government or anyone else protect my gender identity if my gender identity is not recognized? Hello, hello, and thank you for joining me. This is a trans moment with Brandy Beckett. Today, we are going to focus on Project 2025. Yes, the project everyone is talking about. So, well, probably not everyone and maybe not you. So let's discuss a little bit about what Project 2025 is and what it means to America and specifically what it means to transgender communities and individuals. This Project 2025 essentially is the blueprint and the mapping out for the next administration if it happens to be a conservative administration. So if Trump is elected in our country, he will implement this Project 2025 as his platform for running our country. And this is a very, very scary platform to run a country on. So we need to talk a little bit about it. Project 2025 comes out of a think tank conservative organization known as the Heritage Foundation. The Heritage Foundation wrote this 900 page, what they call a mandate for conservative leadership or the blueprint for the MAGA parties administration. That, that's basically it. Consider the following. The Heritage Foundation has populated the Trump administration before. In fact, 66% of the administration in Trump was, was placed there by the Heritage Foundation. The Heritage Foundation basically staffed the Trump administration. And staffing the administration wasn't the only task they have accomplished. They are basically, how do we put this? The Heritage Foundation is the organization who aligns and recommends which Supreme Court justices should be placed on our Supreme Court. They've done it for our last three Supreme Court justices and influenced us ones before those. So the Heritage Foundation wrote the Project 2025. They organized it, put it together, there are many other organizations who help contribute to this, but they are the main organizers of Project 2025, this 900 page manifesto about conservative America. So who is the Heritage Foundation and, and why do they have such a say in our American political landscape, in our policy structures? 
So, the Heritage Foundation was founded in 1973 during the Nixon administration, and it was founded by these three conservative guys, like Coors, right? Um, Joseph Coors, he's the grandson of the founder for, for our Coors, your brewing company, right? So Adolf Coors, his grandson, that dude. Let me get my notes out here. We'll find out the other guy's names. And Paul Weirich and Edwin Fulner. And Edwin Fulner is still on the board of the Heritage Foundation to this day. So these three guys founded the Heritage Foundation because they didn't think that the Nixon administration was right-leaning hard enough for these three guys. So they gathered $250,000 and started this Heritage Foundation in 1973. And they had lofty goals. They wanted to do what is happening today. So basically what I'm saying is there has been a 50 year plan from this Heritage Foundation to basically infiltrate and take over our government and make us a conservative pseudo-theocracy in, in, in this country to install Christian values and to oppress all other values, basically. So, the Heritage Foundation. In the Reagan administration, they really start to take off. In fact, they wrote 2,000 civic policies that the Reagan administration turned into their policies. So 2,000, 60% of all of the, the, of the um, policies that the Heritage Foundation suggested, Ronald Reagan's administration said yes. In fact, Ronald Reagan called the Heritage Foundation, quote, a vital force for helping his administration. And the Heritage Foundation was just getting started with the, with the Reagan administration and Bush Sr. So both of those administrations, the Heritage Foundation was considered the brain trust on foreign policy. They basically wrote the policies that got us involved in all of those conflicts that we had in Iraq and Afghanistan during the Bush administrations. And during the Clinton administrations, the Heritage Foundation fought hard against healthcare policies that ended up failing. So yeah, they helped crush the, the Clinton administration's healthcare policies, and they helped crush a lot of other policies in the Clinton administration. By the time the Trump administration rolls around in 2016, the Heritage Foundation clings on to him. This is one of the few conservative think tanks that grasp onto Trump and starts to support him. And in fact, the Heritage Foundation basically became the staffing organization for the Trump administration. They in the presidential transition, 66 Heritage Foundation employees went to work at the Trump cabinet, the Trump administration. Getting all of these positions filled was the Heritage Foundation's job. And just to name a few people who the Heritage Foundation put into the Trump administration, Betsy DeVos. Yes, in charge of education. We'll get to that in a little bit, but the Heritage Foundation wants to dismantle and get rid of our Department of Education. They wanted to for a long, long time, and they're gonna have the power to do it. If Trump is elected, the Heritage Foundation will have the power to eliminate our education department our National Education Department, they will basically, no, they will literally eliminate that. That's what they want. They already put one of their employees in charge of that program and she tried her darndest to dismantle education for our country. She tried her darndest 
to dismantle the Department of Education. They also put into the administration Mick Mulvaney, who basically became Trump's right-hand man. He was involved in all the Trump going-ons and happenings. Mick Mul Mick Mulvaney was involved in all of that. He comes from the Heritage Foundation. Rick Perry comes from the Heritage Foundation. Scott Pruitt from the Heritage Foundation. And Jeff Sessions comes out of the Heritage Foundation as well. They put all of these people into the Trump administration, plus many, many more. In fact, 64% of the Heritage Foundation policies. They wrote 334 policies. 64% of them were used. Two thirds of those policies were used by the Trump administration. Trump administration and the Heritage Foundation all drink from the same well. They are both fueled by the same money, by the same ideology, by the same political policies. In fact, it's hard to tell one from the other. In 2022, it was completely ramped up into Trumpism. In fact, the president to today of the Heritage Foundation, this guy named Kevin Roberts, Kevin D. Roberts, he comes from a different think tank out of Texas. And in 2022, the Heritage Foundation wasn't happy with their leadership, the president at the time. They didn't think that guy was going hard enough in Trumpian land. So they get rid of him and they bring in Kevin Roberts. And Kevin Roberts, to quote Kevin Roberts, institutionalizing Trump is what he sees his job as. When he first gets into that role as president of the Heritage Foundation, he says his first job is to institutionalizing Trumpism. The Heritage Foundation has become Trumpism or MAGA. They are now the fueling, driving force for MAGA, and they are writing the policies going forward with MAGA. And they are scary, scary policies, y'all. A little bit more on Kevin Roberts. So Kevin Roberts wrote a, a book a couple years ago, in 2019, I think, 2021, something like that. But at any rate, guess who wrote the foreword for Kevin Roberts' book? J.D. Vance. J.D. Vance and Kevin Roberts. Boom, they're like that. This is scary, y'all. The Heritage Foundation is weaving the fabric for the Trump administration. They are guiding MAGA in the policies they want implemented. So let's take a couple moments to look at some of these policies that they want to implement. So this 900 in some page manifesto that the foundation has written, that the Heritage Foundation has written out. And keep in mind, all of the stuff in this 920 page manifesto is the information they want everyone to read. This is not all of the information. This is not all of the things they think. This is not all of the policies they want to implement. This is what they are showing us. This is the hand they are showing us thus far. And it is a scary hand. There are four fronts to this manifesto attack. On, and I'm, I'm gonna call it attack because it is an attack on American citizens. It is an attack on American citizens who are not Christian nationalists. If you are not a Christian, Christian nationalist, your rights are going to be pushed down a little bit lower than the rights for the Christian nationalists, according to this project 
2025. There are four fronts on this attack. The first one, it is what they call restore the family as the centerpiece of America life and protect our children. We're going to break that down in a second. The second one, dismantle the administrative state and return self-governance to the American people. They want to strip all federal regulations and bring things back to the state. They want a wild west with states going wild, okay? That's number two. Number three, defund our nation's sovereignty, borders, and bounty against global threats. So they want to isolate us and make us a nationalist society. They want us to close down our borders, especially not let people up from the southern border. I don't think they're too concerned about the northern border or the borders of the oceans in, in our country. I think they're really concerned about the southern border where people of color have come up traditionally, and they don't like that. They seem not to like that. <laughs> Four, secure our, well, as they say, God-given individual rights to live freely, what our Constitution calls the blessing of liberty. The blessing of liberty. That is where they're going to put in Christian, Christian nationalism. The blessing of our liberty. It is not a blessing of all of the religious freedom of our country. No, that's not what they're talking about in here. They're talking about one specific point of view on religion, one specific point of view on the philosophy of deities. They're talking about the Christian God blessing us, and that's that's what they want to put forward. But let's go back to the very first one. Restore the family as the centerpiece of American life and protect our children. What do you think they mean by that? Let's look at that for a second. Restore the family. What do they consider family? Do they consider myself and my husband family? I doubt it. I'm a transgender woman. My husband is a cis, straight, heterosexual man. We are legally married. I'm legally recognized with the F on my government paperwork. All of my passport, my social security card, my driver's license, all identify my womanhood. They identify me. And I have a marriage certificate in our country that recognizes that. Will Project 2025? I don't know. I don't think so. Some of the language they use in there tells me otherwise. Some of the language they use and especially some of the language they omit. What do they omit? And what do they consider okay as language? And why are you talking about that, Brandy? Are we a free country? And can't we just say what we want to say? <laughs> Not really. <laughs> oh, goodness. This Project 2025 wants to eliminate terminology from government paperwork, official government paperwork, right up front. This is how they want to restore family and protect kids by saying things don't exist. They're going to say that sexual orientation and gender identity, both of those terms will no longer be applicable on government paperwork, according to Project 2025. Gone. You cannot say my gender identity because they don't recognize that. They will recognize only the assignment you were given at birth. Not what you currently identify, not what the government currently recognizes. Only 
what the assignment was at your birth, at my birth, what that little check mark that they put in either box A or box B, that is now going to be your identity if Project 2025 is implemented, which means if Trump is elected, the terms sexual orientation and gender identity will no longer be recognized by our government. Think on that. Here's some more terms that go away according to the number one promise of the Heritage Foundation in their Project 2025. Diversity. You can't use that term anymore. Quality. Gone. Inclusion. Not a term to be used anymore. Gender. Gender equality. Gone. You can't talk about gender or gender equality. You can't use those terms. Gender awareness. Nope, can't use it. Gender sensitivity. Nope, can't use it. Abortion. It's going to be no need for that term as well. Because it's not allowed. Well, why would you need to discuss it nationally? Project 2025. Protective rights. That's You can't write on your government form. I'm being discriminated against because of my reproductive rights. No, because you, know, you can't use that language. I'm being discriminated against because of my gender identity. No, can't use that language. They want to exclude those term that all of that terminology from our use, from our government rhetoric, from our government forms from our government protection. How can our government or anyone else protect my gender identity if my gender identity is not recognized? So I'm going to leave you, as I always do, with this message. Love yourself, but more importantly, like yourself and treat people the way they want to be treated. Bye-bye for now.